In a galaxy not so far away, only 25 million light years, astronomers have found what looks like the remnants of strange celestial explosions called hypernova. Hypernova are possibly the most powerful explosions in our universe since the Big Bang, said Q. Daniel Wang, an astrophysicist at Northwestern University. A hypernova is a highly energetic supernova thought to result from an extreme core collapse scenario in which a massive star of more than 30 solar masses collapses to form a rotating black hole emitting twin energetic jets and surrounded by an accretion disk. This collapse happens so quickly that the outer parts of the star are unaware of what has taken place, and the star is subsequently exploded by vigorous winds of newly formed Nickel 56, blowing off the accretion disk, and shock waves produced as the jets plow through the stellar material. The hypernova, whose luminosity is powered by the radioactive decay of Nickel 56, is the result of the explosion of the star. Curious to learn more about hypernova and their formation? Keep watching. This model for the formation of a hypernova also predicts that these objects should be accompanied by a gamma ray burst or GRB. Although the mechanism to form the gamma rays is still a matter of debate, it is thought that they are produced through interstellar collisions within the jet itself. Whatever the actual mechanism, the gamma rays are beamed into a narrow cone along the direction of motion of the jet and are visible to us only if the jet is pointed in our direction. Astronomers estimate that for every GRB we observe, there are several hundred more we don't see, those which are oriented in directions away from us. Conclusive evidence for this hypernova GRB connection was obtained only recently, although there were many cases where the light curve of the prototype hypernova SN1998BW could be fitted to the light curve decay of gamma ray burst optical transients associated with GRBs it was not until astronomers clearly observed the spectrum of a hypernova within the spectrum of an optical transient that the connection was firmly established. In 1998, one explosion occurred that revolutionized our understanding of the stellar calamity that gives rise to a GRB. In a nearby spiral galaxy, SN1998BW appeared. It bore many unusual features for membership of the type IC fraternity. Although clearly belonging to the class of supernova deficient in hydrogen and helium, this explosion showed very broad emission features and unusually strong radio emission, both characteristics of material moving at a sizable fraction of the speed of light. Essentially, simultaneously, GRB 980425 irradiated Beppo Sachs, triggering the hunt for an afterglow. Measurements of the emission from the GRB suggested that at most 10 to the power minus 5 solar masses of material was ejected in the jets. Additionally, the peak gamma ray emission was four orders of magnitude less than many of the previously observed cosmological bursts. Overall, this was a fairly wimpy gamma ray burst. Meanwhile, SN1998BW displayed a number of peculiarities that led some to quickly suggest that this explosion might be more than just spatially coincident with the GRB. They might be causally related. In terms of its peak luminosity, SN1998BW would be regarded as rather underwhelming by today's standards, clocking in with a peak absolute magnitude of minus 19.5. But at the time, this was many times more luminous than the majority of observed type IC events. However, given that this modestly high luminosity was driven solely by matter produced and ejected in the explosion itself, the implication was that the explosion was unusually energetic. Two pieces of evidence were important here. The first was the high ejective velocities, while the second was the above average peak luminosity. Together, these implied that 0.5 to 0.7 solar masses of radioactive nickel had been synthesized, 10 times that seen in other quark collapse supernova, and more in line with thermonuclear type IA events. Finally, the strong radio emission and broad emission lines in the spectra 
implied particularly high velocities in at least a sizable fraction of the ejected material. In short, SN-1998BW was unusually energetic. But why? On their own, these features in the supernova would have sent minds scurrying in a search of answers. However, it was nearly the coincident location of the supernova to a gamma-ray burst seen days earlier that caught the most attention. SN-1998BW lay within the error box of GRB-980425, suggesting that the two events were related. A year earlier, SN-1997CY also shared a spatial location with another GRB. However, this supernova was poorly constrained temporarily by observations, nor was the spatial coincidence of the gamma-ray bursts particularly good. Indeed, there were two possible bursts associated with this supernova at different locations in the sky. Without clear observations, SN-1997CY lost out to SN-1998BW as the first supernova candidate to be linked to a long gamma-ray burst, although there certainly wasn't a cast-iron case linking the two events. The peculiar kinematics of the supernova would readily be explained if the GRB had occurred in the star which then somehow triggered the supernova. Various papers documenting the GRB and supernova nervously linked the two events, but perhaps with understandable reticence, they avoided claiming that one event directly led to the other. However, careful scrutiny of the explosion revealed that the architecture of the supernova matched predictions of Stan Wolseley's Collapsar model. Although not directly observed, the progenitor was clearly a compact WR star as the spectrum displayed neither hydrogen nor helium. So had the elusive supernova GRB connection been bagged, confirming Wolseley's conjecture? At the time, a somewhat oxymoronic definition perhaps would have been the response. Nowadays, most researchers would stake their reputations on it. However, it would fall to later GRB discoveries to make astrophysicists confident to claim the link was confirmed. At the time, SN-1998BW was documented the term hypernova, which was coined by Kochi Iwamoto to describe the apparent additional oomph in the explosion. Initial estimates placed the energy in the expanding shock wave at 10 to the power 45 joules, which is an order of magnitude above a typical core collapse event, and far in excess of most of the type IC supernova that had previously been observed although such feats might just be feasible in the environment of a supermassive black hole, there was a significant question as to whether an individual star could create so much energy in such a short interval of time. Thus, even at this stage, the idea of a hypernova was questioned. Even at this point, the unprecedented and difficult to explain energies could best be accounted for by beaming of energy across our line of sight. However, what remains spectacular, even in this more bashful scenario, are the velocities of a proportion of the debris, launching matter at up to 99% of light speed. The term hypernova stuck in many astronomers' minds and soundly resonated within the mass media. However, names are like ghosts and have a nasty habit of coming back to haunt you. As more data has streamed in and the GRB supernova have lost their top spot for sheer unbridled energy, the term hypernova has seemed, well, overstated. Moreover, the term hypernova has been previously applied to all sorts of unusually bright supernova, from hypothetical population 3 blasts to gamma-ray bursts, pair instability explosions, and any particularly bright supernova. Thus, although superficially appealing, the term hypernova is so vaguely and widely applied as to make it effectively meaningless. So why were scientists so reticent about making a formal link between GRB 980425 and SN 1998BW? In part, this is the scientific process. Evidence first and claim second. Secondly, with most X-ray data coming in with low resolution, there was sufficient breadth in the error box of the GRB to make an unambiguous link with the supernova. Thirdly, the GRB was unusual in that it appeared to be very weak. So where a link was proposed between the two explosions, such as in the paper of Kenichi Nomoto's group, special circumstances were invoked to account for the possible association for a GRB with a supernova. 
Before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve our content and make these videos better for you. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. GRB 98045 was unusual and perhaps was not functionally equivalent to the explosions seen at cosmological distances. Giving a flavor of this resistance, in Awamoto's Nature article, he says, if this supernova and GRB 980425 are indeed associated, the energy radiated in gamma rays is at least four orders of magnitude less than in other gamma ray bursts, although its appearance was otherwise unremarkable. This indicates that very different mechanisms can give rise to gamma ray bursts. Looking back at this, it seems a peculiar stance given our current knowledge of these bursts. Yet the scientific view is to describe then to explain. The claim to have found a possible supernova, GRB connection, rested on a single event. The concept of reproductibility came to the fore, as did Carl Sagan's adage, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Thus it was perhaps understandable that the final clincher linking GRBs to rare core collapse supernova would come a few years later. Yet despite the reluctance to formally link some supernova to GRBs, Iwamoto and co-workers produced a rather flawless model of the supernova, involving a progenitor star composed of carbon and oxygen CO, and just the sort of star Wolseley had proposed five years earlier as the source of GRBs. At its death, the model star weighed in at 13.8 times that of the Sun and was derived from a more massive progenitor of 40 solar masses that had undergone extensive mass loss. In line with Wolseley's model, this stripped stellar core was probably rotating very rapidly, and it was this high angular momentum that helped the corpse generate a final blaze of activity, aka the GRB. According to this model, throughout its life, stellar winds had ripped and stripped away at this massive star until it was reduced to a bare CO core, a wolf racet star. At its ruin, the core of this stripped object collapsed, generating a black hole of 2.9 solar masses. Jets erupted from the male storm, swirling around the gaping maw of this rapidly rotating black cauldron. These jets then tore through the star, generating the observed GRB. Flanking the jets, the expanded blast wave ripped viscera from the stellar interior that was rich in radioactive nickel-56. This generated a luminous supernova whose output peaked close to that of SN1998BW. Furthermore, the record-breaking photospheric velocity of 40,000 km per second was reproduced by the core collapse model following these parameters. It must be emphasized that 40,000 km per second is more than 10% of the speed of light, and these kinds of speeds were utterly unprecedented in supernova observed at the time. Even at late stages of the spectra of SN1998BW revealed outward velocities exceeding 10,000 km per second. These high velocities could not be explained with standard core collapse scenarios, an altogether more energetic route underlay them. This was the formation of a stellar mass black hole, accompanied by jets of matter moving at a sizable fraction of light speed. Iwamoto and colleagues proposed that these relativistic jets erupted from the stellar surface, generating both these high photospheric velocities and the subsequent gamma rays. Clearly diverging somewhat from the model of Wolseley, they proposed that the gamma ray emission was generated as the jets slammed into the surrounding circumstellar medium, resulting in a powerful synchrotron emission. Wolseley has suggested that the gamma ray emission was generated close to the black hole in a hot bubble of matter and antimatter. Iwamoto's model had gamma rays produced much further afield. Further evidence would subsequently accumulate, casting doubt on both these explanations. But that aside, the basic collapse our model seemed to work. Like Wolseley some years before, Awamoto suggested that the progenitor of SN1998BW and GRB980425 achieved this remarkable death as a result of high angular momentum or strong magnetic fields. The presumption was that this was the result of the merger of the progenitor with a companion star. 
This is something we have already seen. Therefore, the implication was there in the data, SN1998BW was associated with GRB980425. In an interesting twist to the collapser model, scientists propose that the properties of GRB980425 and the accompanying supernova could be best explained if the GRB was observed just off the axis of the jet. Thus, the somewhat underwhelming explosion energies of GRB980425 were a consequence of beaming and the associated relativistic events, rather than the GRB being intrinsically faint. GRB980425 might not have been so wimpy after all. With time, more GRBs were captured that displayed the distinct signature of an underlying supernova. The presence of high levels of metals synthesized in the explosion and then ejected from the collapsed core in the burst. However, the picture was not uniformly clear, nor was the chronology of the observed events. Thanks for watching everyone. Can you guess the connection between the formation of black holes and gamma ray bursts? Do you agree that hypernova is the most extreme cosmological explosion that can happen after the Big Bang? Have you learned anything new from this video? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.